Some of my favorite video essays to make are, at their core, an excited recommendation that people check out something I'm really invested in, or that I find really interesting. For this video specifically, I wanted to talk about possibilities Twitter presents that might not be readily apparent, how to make Twitter a less miserable experience, and try to give a platform to some accounts that I find really charming and unique, and that make Twitter less of a cavalcade of misery for me, and express why they make me feel that way, and why I see Twitter as a potential medium for unique artistic expressions. I've had a Twitter account since 2010, but I never really used it until a couple of years later when I got a smartphone and didn't have enough data on my cell plan to use Tumblr while away from home. And it was then that I got completely sucked into it. Twitter is a social media platform that is as reviled as it is compulsory. Twitter is stupid, and it's a hellhole, and it's severely mismanaged and misunderstood by the people who run it. And it's swarmed with people who get away with doxing and harassment and death threats. And the way it's set up encourages dogpiling and lack of context and aggressive domineering discourse. And at least in the parts of it that I keep up with, there's always an undercurrent of hating the site but feeling trapped there. And how free we would all be if we could just log off. For me, both as a filmmaker and video essayist working to build an audience, and as someone who wants to follow not only information about what's going on in the world and have the ability to pay attention to activists and journalists that I can learn a lot from, and learn about art and film and games and technology, Twitter is essential to me, and I'd rather try to mitigate the harmful aspects it presents than wallow in its misery. My goal here is to showcase some art that I find really novel and really beautiful and interesting and underseen and try to express that Twitter doesn't have to be a dour hellhole. Every account that I'm going to talk about brightens my feed and my day a little bit. I try to platform voices and issues I care about that are serious and potentially upsetting, and talk openly about my own issues with harassment and with the platforms that I use. But I also try to share good things that happen to me, online and off, and share images and words and ideas I find funny and creatively stimulating, rather than building my own little void of anger and dour cynicism. This is not an objective history of art on Twitter or a comprehensive survey of Twitter or other social media platforms as art mediums. I might make that sort of video in the future, but for now, this is more of a collection of accounts I find really charming and inspiring. It's also not a list of my favorite accounts or the funniest or wittiest accounts I follow or of the most important and relevant accounts politically. While I try to follow a variety of news outlets and reporters and activists and experts, especially in areas I'm really ignorant in, along with people who are thoughtful or who make me laugh or provide me with new perspectives, that's also not what this is. It also isn't a question of people I personally like the most, or even my favorite accounts overall, but instead, ones that have expanded my idea of what the medium of Twitter can do, and help me see Twitter and other social media platforms as potential art mediums in the first place. For this list, I kept qualifications very loose, but I wanted to avoid, like I said, just funny accounts, or current event commentary accounts, or art posted with no commentary, or art that was not integrated into Twitter or was unrelated to Twitter, and especially avoid popular accounts that just repost art, especially stolen art. If you want the internet to be more bearable, do not ever reward people who steal and repost what other people made, especially without credit. Try to find people who are doing actual creative work and support them. And my definition of art here is very, very loose, but that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who follows my videos. And as you watch this video, it's important to consider the posts from these accounts in the context of them appearing randomly on my Twitter feed, the timeline, versus just scrolling through them individually as a collection, which for some would be really weird. The first Twitter art bot that really caught my attention was Cloudy Conway, a bot that posts images based on Conway's game of life, with, quote, a special modification of its algorithm to generate special shapes and colors. The images are so gorgeous and have such a layered sense of depth to them. I love vivid colors and juxtapositions of vivid colors with black or with each other, and the images produced algorithmically by Cloudy Conway have the color depth of a rich oil painting and often evoke a tree canopy, or a coral reef, or an unknown galaxy, or sometimes a combination of those. Speaking of galaxies, Crooked Cosmos is another beautiful art bot. Pixel sorting, either popularized or created by Kim Asendorf, takes the pixels in a digital image and places them into a semblance of order. Crooked Cosmos applies pixel sorting to Hubble telescope images. Some images are soothing, and some are more severe and more alien. 
and look like space versions of Francis Bacon paintings. Infinite Deserts is a very cute bot that posts text-based landscape art of deserts and is an example of the art on display being built from the characters that compose the tweet itself. Every tiny desert that pops up on my timeline has personality to it, and holding my phone in my hand and looking at the landscapes reminds me of finding small Chinese cork carving landscape scenes at antique malls. The cork art I've seen never depicted deserts, but they are both representations of plants and of landscapes that I can hold in the palm of my hand. Goosebots is a Goosebumps cover bot run by Neil Cesariga that tweets out bot-generated Goosebumps covers with Babysitter Club covers on Saturdays. They're not scary, but they are funny in the way a lot of bot-generated content is. Vaguely related concepts brought together and put on display without a human checking in to make sure they actually fit together and make sense. He also runs Slideshare Gems, which is a collection of really strange Slideshare slides. And this isn't Twitter, and it's long dead, but honorable mention to his Windows 95 tips. A surprisingly unsettling horror comedy Tumblr made up of edited Windows 95 screenshots that I always thought was great. There are artists that I admire as well that use Twitter not so much as a medium, but as an effective outlet. Art that's Twitter appropriate and integrated into it, and that seems to work better on Twitter than it would on a web portfolio or a different social media platform. Mechisai, meaning something like a slang version of super small or small eyes, thanks to those on Patreon and Twitter who helped me with pronunciation, as I don't speak Japanese, takes drawings and memes and photographs of actual animals that appear distorted due to an odd angle or motion blur, and for each one produces a small, realistic rendered sculpture of what they would look like in real life, usually to a humorous or unnerving effect. This artist is incredible at visual comedy and adept at taking humor from the internet, creating art from it, and effectively reintroducing a cute or funny happy accident in a new, uncanny light. I don't know if I can overstate how much I enjoy Trevor Henderson's work. He's a horror artist who goes by Slimy Swamp Ghost on social media, and he's known for taking photos that people send him and drawing found footage style creatures on them, which he sometimes calls creeps. He does other great art as well, including art for a video game called The Silence Under Your Bed that I'm excited to play soon. His found footage style photo drawings are really stunning and use the Twitter image plus text caption format to their advantage to post the art as if it was an odd photo he'd taken in real life, or to add a humorous or unnerving caption for further context as a part of the final piece. And Moth Cub makes cute, weird paintings and marker drawings, often having to do with Twitter or related subjects, such as the internet or popularity or confused feelings or death, and posts them. I also follow a couple of different story generator bots. Strange Voyage, referred to as an endless nautical story generator, charts a voyage, or perhaps a series of voyages, in disconnected encounters, often mysterious and sometimes hostile, with other travelers, or weather conditions, or sea creatures, or strange phenomena. Unknown Peoples, a brief survey and summary of all the peoples of our world, lists made-up civilizations and cultures. You can also prompt the bot for a response with the words carrying, book, meeting, or quest. And there's also a long list of prompts as well to learn about a civilization. ROM TXT is a bot that posts text from video game ROMs. It's sort of weird found art, often just nonsense text, and also often pretty funny. There are also some accounts that while closer to the realm of retweet bait and memes made up of screenshots and gifs from TV shows and animal photos and, and content along those lines, can offer up interesting and valuable ideas as well. The It's Always Sunny Out of Context account does a good job of choosing screenshots that work out of context, that are funny as standalone tweets, and usually has an appropriate moment from the show on hand in response to current events. Whoever runs the account also really seems to understand the spirit and ideology of the show, rather than presenting it in an edgelordy or shot comedy way. And their pinned tweet, posted in response to Heather Heyer's death at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville and Trump's both sides comment, makes fun of Nazis. So it's pretty cool that a screenshot account is overtly political and not in a particularly profitable or show-offy way. We Rate Dogs sucks. You shouldn't get 7 million followers off of posting quirky dog photos other people took, where you one time changed the dog's name to make it sound whiter because you knew you'd get more retweets off of a cute white dog name on a puppy than its actual name. And The Cat Reviewer is a great alternative to huge, profit-driven brand accounts like We Rate Dogs. 
People tag the cat reviewer in tweets with photos or videos of cats that they encounter in their day-to-day -day lives with a rating. And rather than reposting a professional quality photo with a meticulously constructed accompanying tweet engineered for maximum retweets, the cat reviewer just shares the original tweets that it sent. And they're often blurry or grainy or digitally zoomed in. But the lack of polish is charming. And it's there because these glimpses into serendipitous human and animal interaction from all over the world are genuine. They're all people who saw a cat and excitedly wanted to share it with other people who like cats. Not for virality, submissions rarely get that many retweets, but because they like cats and want to share it with a community of people who also like cats. It's very, very sincere and organic and sweet and pleasant. And I don't think it'll ever be a media empire profiled in Esquire, but it's a wonderful account. Another fun retweet account is Multibev, which is made up of retweets of people who are drinking multiple beverages at once. There's some funny, ironic Multibev faux branding on the account. Join the Bevolution! And it's neat to see what other people around the world are drinking. Pepito the cat is simple. It's a bot that posts security cam photos of a cat named Pepito who lives in France. As he enters and exits his home, Pepito is either out or he's back home. On top of the novelty of the account, it's just nice to receive an unexpected Pepito update on my timeline in between posts about climate change disaster and general geopolitical catastrophe. Gamborzoi, a portmanteau of Gambaru, meaning roughly doing your best or going beyond doing your best, and Borzoi, a dog breed, with Zoi adding extra emphasis to complete the pun, is an account focused on a Borzoi dog in Japan named Edgar. The account is made up of photos and videos of Edgar, with a caption first in Japanese, then translated into English. Adding to the theme, many of the posts have to do with Edgar trying to do his best. I love the way Borzoi dogs look. They look like gorgeous monsters, and Edgar and his owner both have a lot of personality, and the captions and scenarios are cute and clever, without seeming contrived, or like this person is forcing their dog into weird situations to go viral. Tiny Headed Kingdom is an LA-based company that makes stuffed animals with minimalist expressions and small heads on large bodies. Their website states, Come to the Tiny Headed Kingdom. In the kingdom, we get to be different together. THK Fan Club is a fan account for the Tiny Headed Kingdom, and they post posed photos of the animals, sometimes cute photos, and sometimes photos that show the animals in strange or disturbing situations. I follow very few brand accounts or brand fan accounts, but I find these photos and the enthusiasm owners have for their tiny headed animals really charming. Grant, at Grant the Thief, is a writer and podcaster who also posts a ton of insightful media analysis on his account. Of particular interest to me is his One Piece read-through and analysis thread. Grant is reading the series for the first time, and after each chapter, he posts his thoughts in one tweet, plot ramifications, how the chapter affected him emotionally, and a visual analysis of his favorite panel or panels in another tweet. I've been reading One Piece for over 15 years, and on top of how fun it is to watch someone experience my favorite series for the first time, he's helped me appreciate the art and pacing and attention to detail in the comic even more than I already did. And his observations are sharp and meticulous and entertaining. I actually started following Casey at Manofsky article because he was doing a similar, though less meticulous, read through a few years ago. And his media insights, especially on comics, along with his emphasis on trying to make fan spaces more more sincere and inclusive, continue to enrich my timeline. Dialogue is just generally really good at consistently tweeting weird, funny, off-putting, surreal horror tweets. And Ryan Woodsmall does these goodnight tweets every night, or almost every night, I didn't go through and check every single night, that are kind of funny and unsettling and strange. And they play at fears of calamity, or of liminal creatures or occurrences, or subvert common ideas or idioms. I enjoy following Ryan regardless, but I especially like his weird nightly horror tweets. A lot of weird horror tweets or joke tweets feel like someone is just fishing for their next tweet to go viral, but with Ryan's it feels more organic, and I admire his sticking with it so consistently. I had some other accounts I had considered discussing, but realized they had been discontinued months or years ago, so I cut them. I also solicited suggestions on Twitter for other accounts to look into, but I haven't fully gone through them yet. I'll probably do a follow-up video, so feel free to suggest other accounts or other types of accounts you find interesting, either in my Twitter thread, linked in the description, or in the comments. 
when Twitter as a platform for art, whether randomly or deliberately generated, and for documenting small joyful moments works, it feels like a window that offers me glimpses of other worlds fictional or real, and it helps me feel more connected with other people, not parasocially with individual people. The glimpses are small and separate and truncated and spread all over the world or all over uh, space, but more connected generally. And I feel more like a part of a whole, and I'm reminded of the human capacity for humor and creativity rather than feeling like an alienated loner staring at a screen. I still pay attention to upsetting and alarming news coming in. I think it's irresponsible, self-imposed ignorance to not keep up with what's happening around you, and at least try to do what you can to make it better. But as an animal lover and a horror fan, these accounts build out my timeline into one that is more robust, that can slow down and showcase weird little moments and experiments on top of the endless rapid stream of the news of the day. I hope that people who use Twitter as much as I do who watch this video find it valuable. If we're all trapped there in hell together, we might as well make the best of it. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please consider donating to my Patreon so I can keep making videos like this one. Thanks!